Our application works fine at this point, but we do need to provide some type of validation. For example, let's go ahead and run our application. And let's assume that we make a mistake during typing, which could be very common. We say one plus, and we forget to enter, well, let's say one plus one works. But we do one plus, and we forget to enter the, the additional value, and we hit enter, we receive an index out of bounds exception. So what we need to do is check that we have the proper number of arguments. So what we can do is say if values.size is less than three, because we need at least three parameters, then we're gonna throw an illegal argument exception and say invalid input expected value plus value received and then whatever the input was. So now if we run this, what will happen is we're not going to get index out of bounds exception. What will happen is we can still enter one plus one, we'll still get that. But if we enter one plus something, we forget to enter the additional value, we'll now get an illegal argument exception that was thrown, say an invalid input expected value, blah, 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 it was this particular value. Now, you could decide to crash the program if that's what you'd like to do, or you can decide to to skip this completely. So we could change this. So instead of having it throw an exception, we could actually just have it say print line. We print line if values are less than three, else. And then we can wrap everything else inside of an else here. And what will happen now when we run the application? We'll run this and we'll go one plus one is two. We do one, what is it? Today? It's two plus something. We make a mistake, enter, invalid input, expected value plus value received two plus. Okay, well, let's try it again. Two plus three. Okay, well, it works. So now our application isn't crashing. We've performed some level of validation. We're providing the feedback to the user and we can continue using the app and it works as we would expect. Now, but we also have another problem. The other problem is gonna be, let's go ahead and run this. What happens if for whatever reason, a user enters one plus two, and then the next time they say one plus dog, what's gonna happen there? Well, we get another exception from the program and the program crashes. And a calculator doesn't know how to handle the word string dog. And so it says number format exception for input string dog. And if we take a look at line number 18, it's happening right here. And the reason why it's happening is on the right hand side, we're trying to convert that value, the RHS value, which came from here, which is the second, the third item in the in the list, we're trying to convert it to a double. And that's where the problem occurs. So we need to do something here. So one quick thing that we can easily do, which works very well, because at this point, this isn't an illegal argument, we shouldn't be able to handle this inside of our application. What you could do is you would say to double or null, and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the Elvis operator. And the Elvis operator says, hey, if something happens here and this is null, then I want you to return another value. And so this is gonna say throw legal argument exception, invalid input. And then we'll go ahead and actually just go ahead and render that input values zero. Now what's gonna happen here is if this value right here can be converted to a double, it will be converted to a double and it will be returned here. Otherwise, if it cannot be returned to a double, a null will be returned. At that point, the Elvis operator will interrupt and say, hey, um, this is on the left-hand side over here, this is null, so we need to do something on the right-hand side. And then we're telling it, hey, if you encounter a null, throw an illegal argument exception. So basically we're trying to parse it, we couldn't parse it as a double, so therefore it was returned as a null, and at that point, and then short circuited to the right hand side over here. So we'll do the same thing over here to double or null. And then I'm just going to copy this to save some typing. There we go. And then this will be value one. Now, if you can see over here, all these are grayed out because we're already trying to cast, we're already casting these to a double. I can actually remove these redundant calls. So boom, let's we'll go ahead and remove these real fast. I'll be right back. Okay, now we have, I'm back, we have our very succinct and clean version of our calculation. And so, very nice here, very, very succinct that what's, what's happening. 
and we can actually print things directly to the screen. So if we were to run it now, say one plus two, we're gonna get back three. If I say one plus dog, we're gonna get an illegal argument exception and valid input. Now, of course, this is crashing the application. So there's a couple of things that you could do here and which I would challenge you that we're not gonna do that you could do on your own to challenge yourself is remove the illegal argument exception and you can either decide to make it a zero. So you could just do something like this that would make it a zero so that it would be a double or a zero, which wouldn't work. So we, because as you see here, the type inference is giving you an example, or you can go ahead and say double or null at that point in time, it could be a double and the same thing down here and then check to see if you have nulls for either one of them. And if you do, perhaps provide a message to the user and then let the application continue to keep going. Here though, we're just gonna keep this where it's gonna continue to short circuit. So at this point in time, we now have an application that tells the user that their invalid input is occurring for their first or their second value. Otherwise, it's gonna continue on. Now there's one last little thing that I would like to do here in this program to clean it up just a little bit. We have a little bit of duplication here with this print line. And what we can do is we can actually return a value from a when clause. So I'm gonna say val result equals when, and then we're just gonna get rid of these print line statements and get rid of the other parentheses on the other end. And now we have a double that we can use. And then what we can use is just go ahead and print line the result. And this really cleans up our when clause. Now we can actually see it's really easy to read and it's very easy to follow that we have an operator, we have a left hand side, a right hand side. Based upon the operator, if it's plus, minus, multiplication or divide, we're going to perform those operations with the left hand side and the right hand side. Otherwise, we don't support whatever operation is thrown and we'll basically throw an exception. And then finally, once that result is returned, we'll go ahead and print the result. So let's go ahead and run the application again just to see what it looks like. So one plus two, there's three, three plus five, 10 times seven, 70, 90 divided by six, 15. So now our application works. We've added some validation in here to accept only valid chunks of input. We've made sure that we can only accept certain parameters and we're providing feedback to the user. And then of course, when we're done, we can just hit enter and the application will say goodbye, that we're completely done, and then the process exits. And you've now written your first calculator app. Now the next thing is how to deploy it so other people can use it.